Okay, look, I'm not really a sports guy at all. And yet, I am stoked for Nintendo Switch Sports. Which of course means we gave it the full analysis machine treatment. Yep, only the finest for one of Nintendo's best-selling game series ever. So let's stop wasting time and get right into it. And right off the bat, wait a second, baseball isn't here! Uh, right off the racket, let's start with the basics. Nintendo Switch Sports is a proper sequel in the Wii Sports line being more akin to Wii Sports Resort rather than Wii U's Wii Sports Club, which was essentially just a remake of the first game. This time, you'll get six sports out of the box, with a seventh being added this fall. Three of those sports, being volleyball, badminton, and soccer, are brand new to the series, with the other four being updated versions of sports that have appeared before, with bowling and golf having both appeared in every Wii Sports game to date, whereas tennis was in everything but Resort, and sword fighting, now called Chimbara, is returning for the first time since Resort. Now interestingly, although these seven sports outnumber the five of the original Wii Sports, albeit without baseball and boxing, it's significantly fewer than the 12 found in Wii Sports Resort. However, with golf being added after launch, that opens the door for more sports to be added in the future too. In fact, there may already be some clues of a few more sports in the cards, but we'll get to those in a moment. So even though it may have fewer sports in Wii Sports Resort, at least so far, it does continue a fun idea that Resort started, which is contextualizing everything within a fully realized world, where all of the activities exist within the same virtual space. Only this time, instead of spanning an entire island, it now takes the form of a sport campus within a bustling city. Enter Spaco Square the hub to all of the fun activities in Nintendo Switch Sports. But don't worry, you won't have to physically walk to each location. Instead, it's all laid out on a simple menu that just so happens to overlap perfectly with the buildings in which respective sports take place. Pretty clever! In case there were any doubt, you can even see specific elements for each sport from way up here, like the edges of the volleyball court, the blue badminton court, bowling lanes, and even the three different tennis courts contained within each of the circles, which we get a much better look at in this screenshot. This angle also better shows that physical 3D signs and icons exist for each of those buildings too. And even though we can't see much of the interior for the Chambara building from here, the top-down view reveals that we can see the circular dual-color platform here as well. And then, of course, the soccer field speaks for itself, which is the only activity visible here that's entirely outdoors, besides golf. So that covers all six of the sporting facilities available at launch. But hold up! What's that right down there? That building looks pretty similar in prominence to the others. Could it be a 7th sporting facility? Well, based on the unique shape with half of it curving, we think it might actually be a baseball stadium, albeit an indoor one with a roof that appears to have a park on it. Which we're thinking means Wii Sports Baseball might be back too. Yes! And that will leave boxing as the only sport missing from the original Wii Sports. But perhaps it'll be added down the line. Okay, now if baseball, which is a sport that hasn't even been announced yet, is seemingly already here in Spaco Square, where the heck is golf? After all, we know it's coming, but there's no sign of it here in the square. Which actually does kind of make sense considering how huge golf courses can be, and it's highly unlikely you'd find one in the middle of a city. See? Big! Or maybe that is Big C. Because in the golf clip, we can see that it appears to take place on an island, based on the lack of visible terrain in the distance. Which makes perfect sense considering the fact that this course is directly lifted from Wii Sports Resort, which also took place on its own island. See, the similarity is unmistakable. We're thinking that you might access the golf courses by boat. So if we go back to the map on the main menu, well, what do you know? There just so happens to be a very prominent boat dock just above the baseball stadium, and it's lined up almost perfectly with the other menu objects. So we're thinking that you'll select the dock in order to catch a boat ride over to the golf field islands. So all things being considered, that brings us up to a potential 8 sports being selectable from the main menu. But there's still a few more things here in Spaco Square that I want to talk about. First up is the plaza in the middle, which we get a better look at in this image from the website. And from what we can tell, there isn't a whole lot to note there, beyond a rooftop park and some interior space. With this one looking a bit like an art gallery, and the corridor over here looking about as windy as Lombard Street. And that's for a good reason, because when viewed from above, it actually forms a logo of Spaco Square. Pretty cool! Next up, we have this large building in the back, and although it's nearly impossible to read the text from up here, this alternate angle reveals that it says Spaco Square Station. As in, a train station. And we know this because we can see three different sets of rails extending from it. One to the east, another to the west, and one that branches off of that to the south. Now even though we don't see it in action on the map, a sporting clip from the Japanese website does. And it actually looks to be more in size to a shuttle hanging from a rail above. Now the question is, is this just for show, or could there be something more to it? At the very least, it shows how the citizens get around. But of course, we can't help but wonder if you might be able to catch a ride on it too. 
perhaps in order to access a ninth sport or maybe even more that could be added in the future. Oh, and speaking of vehicles, you might have noticed a lack of them on the world map, despite the abundance of roads. But if we go to this clip, we can actually see a car driving around in the background. The world here is impressively detailed, especially inside each facility, with all kinds of details to bring the world to life, like libraries, coffee shops with free Wi-Fi, ice cream stores, and art galleries. <laughs> this truly is a hipster's paradise. Which is probably why you'll find hipsters, or people, doing all kinds of things like walking around, eating ice cream, reading books, sitting on chairs or even staircases, having conversations, resting against handrails, or even spectating. You can even see their heads turning to follow the volleyball here, and this guy goes to snap a picture. They'll even react to your actions during a sport too, cheering you on whenever you score a point, like in soccer. I especially like how the girl here gently claps their coffee in one hand. So with how detailed this world seems to be, we can't help but wonder if you might be able to freely explore it on foot too. After all, Wii Sports Resort had a mode where you could freely explore the island by plane. So could there be something like that here too, where you can explore all the sporting facilities for yourself? Probably not, but hey, we can hope. So with the world fully covered, let's turn our attention to how each sport actually plays. And as you might expect, motion controls still play a major role, seemingly being required for every game. And it probably won't surprise you to hear that the original four Wii Sports all seem to play nearly identically to the previous installments, although with a few interesting tweaks, but we'll get to those soon enough. For now, let's kick things off with a new sport, starting with badminton. And it seems pretty straightforward. As with tennis or most of the other sports, it seems the computer will automatically handle your movement, leaving it to you to focus on control of the racket, which is handled the simple swings of the controller, including the ability to perform smash shots. But the Japanese website also adds they can perform drop shots too, by holding ZR and shaking the controller. And that's pretty much it! So next up we have volleyball, which like most of the other sports, has the computer seemingly handling your movement here too, allowing you to focus on hitting the ball, for the most part. Because we noticed something interesting at points during this clip from the Japanese website, and that's the fact that whenever your character stops automatically moving, an arrow appears on either side of your player, which seems to give you the chance to strafe left or right, and adjust your positioning on the court. And we see the player do exactly that throughout the video. To lend even more credence to this idea, we can see those same arrows appear during the example match shown in Nintendo Direct, except in that case neither player makes use of it suggesting it's an entirely optional feature if you decide to use it. Anyways, like an actual volleyball, your team can only touch the ball three times at most before hitting it to the other side, as the game clearly counts each hit, with the ball even changing color each time. The controls follow the usual bump, set, and spike formula, with bump using an underhanded gesture, sets an overhead one, and spike being a downward swing. And based on this clip, it seems it can even dive for the ball too. And finally for the new sports, we have Rocket League, er, soccer. But this sport seems to take a few more liberties than most of the others, being perhaps the most different to the actual thing. Because in this case, you play with an overinflated soccer ball with some pretty exaggerated physics. Now, even though the trailer only shows matches consisting of 4 on 4, the Japanese website confirms that 1 vs 1 is an option too. As for the controls, well, they seem to be a little bit more intricate compared to the other sports, as not only do we see two Joy Cons being used, but the menu even confirms that it's the only game to require both of them, with no single Joy Con option being available. And that's likely because, like Rocket League, this game demands you have full control of your player's movement, instead of the computer handling that as in the other sports here. A clip from the Japanese website reveals some more button controls too. ZL appears to be for sprinting, which is limited by a Zelda-like stamina meter that appears, ZR passes the ball, and B is for jumping, which you'll probably need with how high that ball can bounce. As for kicking, well the trailer reveals a simple swing of the Joy-Con is all that it takes, or you can swing both of them for a diving header. But hold up, let's back up for a second, because isn't it a little odd to be gesturing with your hands to kick the ball? Which is probably why Nintendo has announced they'll be providing an update this summer that'll allow you to actually kick the ball using your leg during actual matches, and it's all thanks to the leg strap accessory that comes bundled with a physical version of the game, which you might already own thanks to Ring Fit Adventure. Before the update hits though, you can already use the accessory in a shootout mode too, which, even though it wasn't shown in the trailer, the Japanese website has a brief clip of it with a goal appearing to be seeing who can score the most points out of 5 kicks each. Now interestingly, the goal appears to be smaller here than usual, with these slates blocking off a portion of it, and we can't help but wonder they might dynamically shrink the goal between rounds. In any case, the sport seems pretty straightforward otherwise, which is to say it actually looks more like Rocket League with humans than it is straight soccer. Both thanks to the simplified player count and rule set, we tell the offsides of the thing here, but also the ball's giant size and floaty physics. 
Plus, check out how the game begins. Not with a kickoff, but instead a rocket style league race to the ball, which itself is launched into the air. This one really seems to be the most arcadey and unrealistic of all the sports on display, which is a little funny considering it might also be the most complicated. You even have a full minimap in the corner to help keep track of the ball, teammates, and opponents. Helpfully, not only are the walls on both sides of the field color-coded to match your team, pink and blue in this case, but there are even animated arrows that appear along the walls that constantly point you toward the opponent's goal, which should help avoid any min-match confusion. Awesome! You're also able to call out to your teammates when you're open, which should be pretty useful when playing online. And then there are just some neat details like the glass shattering effect when scoring a goal, and the win animation that your team has immediately after. Finally, we notice that there are at least two different soccer balls being used. A white one is shown in the trailer, and another goal is shown on the Japanese website. So perhaps you can choose which soccer ball to use? And maybe they had different properties or something? Now, as I mentioned earlier, a stamina gauge governs how long you can run for. But it seems that opponents can knock you down with a kick too, which further depletes that meter. Ouch! Okay, so that covers it for all the new sports, so let's take a look at the returning ones now and see what's changed, if anything. And first up, we have bowling, in which you'll still swing your arm to roll the ball down the lane, adding spin to the rotation of your hand. But this time, the game displays a neat motion line to better help visualize the swing's physical motion, which will help you understand how that translates into the ball's movement. Of course, you can still make aiming adjustments before throwing the ball, and this time the characters actually use their legs. Furthermore, positioning and rotation have both been separated to different buttons, meaning you no longer have to toggle between the two. Now, in previous games, Wii Sports Bowling has offered a few different modes beyond just 10 pin, and Nintendo Switch Sports seems to be no exception, as another clip on the Japanese website shows off a special challenge, one that has a giant hole in the middle of the lane that you have to clear by rolling the ball up the jump with enough speed to climb the hill that the pins are now resting on. Whoa! A picture from the same website shows another challenge, where you have to carefully roll the ball along a thin beam to cross a gap in order to reach the pins. Yeah, be careful! Next up is tennis, and it appears to work identically to before, where you only have to swing the racket by swinging the Joy-Con, as the computer will handle your player's movement. But this time, it appears there's more than a single court. Because even though the trailer shows only a clay court, a clip from the Japanese website, which I'm getting really tired of saying, reveals a hard one as well. And if we go to the map, we can see a grass one is confirmed too. Moving on, we have Swordplay, or Chambara as it's now known, which returns from Wii Sports Resort. And like before, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle to the death. Okay, so maybe you're just trying to knock them off a platform into the water below. Tomato, tomato. In any case, you have near one-to-one -one control with the sword by swinging your Joy-Con around. And like in the previous version, you can block too, which thanks to the Japanese website, we know is performed by holding the ZR button. And this is where the strategy comes into play, as you need to be extra cautious when your opponent is blocking. Because if you hit their sword, you'll be left stunned for a couple of seconds, as indicated by the stars that appear around your head. Thankfully, the game now draws extra attention to anyone who's blocking by outlining their sword in blue, so keep an eye out for it. Now there's something else new here too, because thanks to the same Japanese clips, we can see three different sword types being used, including the straight bladed yellow and orange one, a jagged purple and yellow one, as well as this longer orange one. And then, we even have dual wielding too. Wait, what? That's right, you can now carry two swords, one in each hand, making it possible to guard and attack at the same time, which is freaking sick. And that explains why we can see a dual Joy-Con option on the main menu too. In addition, did you catch the meter at the bottom of the screen in this mode? It seems to fill up over time, as well as every time you land a hit, which we're guessing might earn you some kind of special attack. Also, did you spot the rope that hangs from the platform down to the water? Which explains how the players get up to the platform in the first place. It's a little touches. Finally, we have Golf. Although it's also the one we see the absolute least of. Which makes sense as it's only being added to the game later. Gameplay-wise, it appears to work identically to past games, where you first draw the controller back, then swing as if it were an actual golf club to dictate both power and accuracy. Now perhaps more interesting is the fact that, as we said earlier, this golf course isn't new. It's actually just an updated version that's appeared in every other Wii Sports game to date. And even beyond that, because the Wii Sports courses are actually based on NES Open Tournament Golf. You know, from over 30 years ago? Which strongly suggests that all the rest of the courses will be back too. Which, if that is the case, let's hope there's a few new ones thrown in the mix as well. Woo, so that covers pretty much everything about the game. But there are still just a few final details I wanted to point out left. First up is the fact that, as you probably noticed, the game has ditched me as the primary avatars. But thankfully, they're not gone entirely, as two Miis are shown off during actual gameplay in the Nintendo Direct, confirming that they are in fact playable. And that makes me pretty happy. 
In addition, according to the Japanese website, it seems there may be some animal avatars too. Or at least those of the squirrel type. Regardless, it seems you'll be able to customize whichever avatar you use in a variety of ways, as shown in this picture from the Japanese website. Finally, we already know that the game will have a big online focus, with every sport being playable online. And as part of this, it seems that Nintendo is building in a simple communication option too, allowing you to communicate via stickers to your opponents. See, they even show who it came from. Neat! And there you have it, we're finally done covering everything major we could dig up about Nintendo Switch Sports. So what do you make of all this? Are you even more excited for the game now? Let us know by posting in the comments below. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and of course stay tuned to Game Explain for more on Nintendo Switch Sports and everything else Nintendo Switch. We'll catch you later. Bye everyone!